They're the ones that give us the ability to bring you these great games. Weekly, it's week number 25. Here we are in the ace match. I'm Tumba. With me tonight will be Sleeper Cells casting this best of three down to the final match. Neeb Saga spawning as the Zerg. Cross position. We've got a Terran player known as Nage. Sleeper, what do you think, buddy? I don't know what to think at this point. Both players showing fantastic play, both high level, obviously, masters level of play from both players. Uh, first game, of course, Neeb Saga was able to take it with some just great patience, holding back till the right moment, and then pushing in with a great surround, and killing everything that Nage had, and eventually going for the style points and dropping down a bunch of banelings and taking out what was left of Nage's army, and then swooping in with a giant swarm of Mutalis, or a cloud, I believe he called it, and just taking game number one. But in game number two, Nage Saga, using the map completely to his advantage, engaging only in the small chokes where he could just pretty much uh, control the flow of the battle. And was able to take that victory very, very dominantly. So both players showing that they each have their own strengths. So I, I couldn't, like I said before, like I saw the last game, I could not call this if he asked me to. I couldn't call if he had a gun on my head. I would have no idea. You know what? It sort of reminds me of the younger brother versus the older brother. I'm not sure chronologically where these players lie, but I believe Nage is a bit ahead of Neeb. So Neeb takes the first game off of him, and Nage says, No, no, let's go to Zelnaga and let me show you how I work. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited uh, to see this, this ace match, as you are, and um, it'll be interesting to see uh, what the players roll out with. Nage, obviously, um, last game, a lot more uh, safe and cost-effective with his units. Uh, great Marine splits. He knew he had to man up, game up, and, uh, and give Neeb his full respect and attention. So Definitely, definitely. Um, they did kind of kind of felt like Nage was kind of just like toying with him in the first game. It was just like, oh, yeah, I got this. It's all good. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to put all my all into it. And then Neebs just smacked him down. Yeah. Smacking motion, but you guys couldn't see that, so. I heard it, though. I heard the inflection. Oh, yes. <laughs> Spawning pool. Not a big Hatchery fan well. uh, of opening hatch first ever against any race. I think it's it's the risk reward isn't there, um, in my opinion. Neeps has been liking it though. Although barracks out in front from Nage Saga, two racks, not quite Praxy, but definitely sort of forward. Trying uh, to figure out where he wants here. to start to construct that. Those Marines are going to be running across the map though. No, nothing in the realm of a. Uh, a bunker on the way or anything like that. In fact, I don't believe there's... Where's the SUV? There's... Two bunkers. Two bunkers being built. Oh, wait. Yeah, there we go. Two bunkers. Never mind. That Marine actually... <laughs> that SUV is actually 100% safe. Like, the uh, the SUV. He, he yeah. He couldn't hit he, that, mer that No, SUV. he has pinned himself in, walled himself off, using the minerals to keep himself safe. He's running away now. Bravely running away? The, that Marine's job was only to save that SUV. And the SUV is too- No, no! Ah! They're still saving the SUV, they're still doing their job. Did we ever name that Marine from the last game? No. Oh, they failed. They may have all died, but the SUV did too, so they failed in their job. So that, uh, that two racks aggression was successfully thwarted by Neebs very, very handily. Yeah, Nage can't be happy with that. Uh, didn't do much damage at all. Um, I don't think he uh, he was able to really uh, maximize on uh, on the, his early aggression there. Yeah, no, I don't think he did at all. A lot more Marines on the way once again from uh, Nage Saga. Going to be going for a very heavy Marine expand build. He does have his command center pretty much... Three fourths of the way done, so you'll be going for two racks expand. Very popular, very safe build to go. You can do a little bit of aggression and get a very fairly early expansion out. And so we're gonna have to see how Neebs responds to this. Uh, this very aggressive expand build from Mage. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a couple more zerglings hitting the field now. As we look at the unit counting station, 
uh, 21 drones to 21 SEVs and two mules. As you mentioned in the previous game, they were even on harvesters, which means uh, actual economic loss oh, for the Zerg. Did. Because uh, with the with the Terran, of course, able to go ahead and drop mules, makes a big difference. I found out. I just found out. Everybody, it's okay. We did name the Marine. And the name was? Ralph. Ralph. Ralph Straight being called back into action. Straight from Sergeant Sheep. Awesome. He's our, he's our naming committee. <laughs> he came up with such classics as Phil, the Roach, and of course, uh, uh, Carl. It was Carl the Siege Tank. I remember Carl. Carl was a good good siege tank. Carl never did get blown up. Carl made it through the whole entire, uh, may have made it through the whole Dude, tournament, Phil. I think. Un Dude, unbelievably. I don't believe you, Ephialtes. It's totally 100% sheep. I'm, I'm giving sheep all the credit. But anyway, back to this game. Same thing that was going on a couple minutes ago is going on now. Both players sitting back, mackering up, making harvesters, making units, doing all those good things. Not sure why, but uh, Team Fortress has evidently made me a better StarCraft player. It's also given me Tennis Elbow. <laughs> and me, part Partial Carpal Tunnel. Tunnel. Oof. It's not too bad yet. Too I, would, uh, I would definitely take Tennis Elbow over Carpal Tunnel any day. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure you would. Any day. For those of you that don't know, uh, Tennis Elbow can be... You can't get it from playing video games, believe it or not, but it is uh, very easily treatable, whereas Carpal Tunnel... If you Sucks. ask, uh, yeah, if you ask uh, TLO, we'll tell you. Horrible, horrible affliction. Luckily, I'm not too, like, I'm not too far along, and I know how to do, uh, like, stretch and stuff, so it's actually getting better. It's improving. But, uh, that, that's what comes from being, being me and playing games since I was, like, five. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had the best posture when playing, uh, back in the day when I used to play Warcraft. I uh, put so I many hours in. That now, so it's Oof. Okay. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah, actually, it's actually my left hand that bothers me now. Right. Uh, the mouse hand is fine. You didn't oh, know. Uh, you didn't know sleepers that you could uh, go ahead and get uh, tennis elbow from a uh, 35 APM, did you? <laughs> Actually, I don't know what tennis elbow is. I'll be honest with you. Tennis elbow is essentially just an uh, affliction where there's damage to the tendon or the muscle um, attached to the elbow, and it gets inflamed. And uh, any little motion that you do can set it off, and it feels like uh, just a, a stabbing pain sort of through your elbow at any given moment. So. Can, yeah, you... muscles issues, muscle issues in my neck actually. That's the same way. Oh, that no, -uh. no good for me. I would, I, I'd get. Oof, couldn't imagine. Pain meds, man. Es necesito. <laughs> Drop coming in from Nature Saga. Gonna go for that third, which came up while we were yabbering on. Four Neves, one drone mining gas at that. So he's gonna go ahead and see if that's there, and then turn around and fly away. Scared of that drone. That drone looks very angry. But uh, actually, gonna go ahead and sneaky, sneaky. Gonna drop behind the smoke. Dim. There he goes. Gonna go ahead and kill that drone. Kill that drone. There he goes. And the queen as well. Has a couple more drones actually. And there goes the. Oh, shot. run away bravely! Great pickup. Only loses one marine. Wonderful ah, control there from Nage. That, that was that was the awkward marine. Gotcha. They just they just left him. <laughs> Alrighty. What else we got going on here? What is our Terran player doing? Looks like he's got a factory and a starport out as well, obviously, because he had to have that medevac from somewhere. Tech Lab on the factory. Got siege tanks up. Siege mode is done as well. A lot of Marines just chilling here behind this barracks wall. And his third is up and running. And I hear Thriller. Thriller? Yes. I guess that's an improvement over Kelly Clarkson. Um, for those of you who have no idea, congratulations. Um, but anyway, <laughs> lots of Zerg things moving across the map. And by moving across the map, I mean poking out very slightly and then turning around, going to where the uh, where the coop tumor pops out, and then turning back around, going home. And I think that, yep, that is indeed another medevac flying across the map, going down to the right corner. Going to be going up into the main very shortly. There's a spine crawler just kind of chilling there to defend, I'm sure, against this exact thing. Do you know what makes uh, you know what makes Sleeper such a great caster? Is because he is very precise on where those drops are and where they're coming from, allowing the camera person, who is horrible, 
it's me, uh, to see where those drops are coming from. So, awesome job, Sleeper. Way to go ahead and call out where that medevac is. Just to make sure that the viewers at home don't miss any of the action. Uh, and as you can see, the, the drop does go down. A uh, bit of an annoyance there. And that's what he needs to do. You know, uh, Neeb actually supply blocked at the moment. In it, indeed, indeed. Just gonna make sure that you, uh, you spot that nice little green dot on the It's giant such a small, map. right, it's such a small dot. For those of you that have never ops before, map, I saw it. yeah, it, it can be very hard to miss drops and such, especially, uh, you've gotta be ever so vigilant in the Terran vs. Zerg matchup. Definitely, there's one, the one plus side of TVZ with, with Terran drops is as long as the Terran isn't like purple or the color, close enough color to what the Zerg is, you can see the drop on the creep a lot easier. Right. That's the only plus side. Yeah, purple would be not good. Or pink for that matter. Try yeah. imagine seeing pink on this sort of a map, the on this sort of a creep. Original pretty pink Protoss. Yes! Sleeper sails. Yes, I was indeed the original Pretty Pink Protoss back in week number one. Who you know? I believe there are still VODs of that. I think that was back when we were at the live stream. Ugh. We, we, complain all, we complain all we want about Justin TV. But that, uh, whew, live stream. I was, I was just a viewer and a player at that point, and I was angry at live stream. <laughs> Can't imagine how the fantastic folk of, of such a simpatico and Rapsack were, uh, were feeling about that. You know, but you know what, uh, Justin TV uh, has great strides, wonderful uh, strides for e-gaming. Hopefully they continue to improve their site. Here we are, uh, clearing out some creep tumors, mutalisks, lots of them. Let's bring up the unit counting station. We see uh, 23 mutalisks and 20 banelings. So Ooh, this could be, could be quite devastating if properly used. 